Uh, our, our group consisted of basically me, um, so <laughs> and, 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 and Dr. Vide, who, who couldn't be here today. Um, but we thought um, it, it, that, that uh, one of the, the things that we could very well uh, eas easily do is uh, to, it, it, what we have is uh, um, a, a, combined, um, a combined dental e electronic health record and, um, I, I'm sorry, combined electronic health record and, and uh, combined uh, electronic dental record. Um, uh, one of the things that we could do is to, to uh, work uh, with the pharmacogenetics group um, in implementing, uh, for example, warfarin pharmacogenetics testing prior to uh, dental procedures, uh, because often uh, uh, we have to let the warfarin um, uh, levels go down so that before uh, these kinds of procedures to, to uh, prevent uh, excessive bleeding during uh, dental uh, um, procedures. So that timing of, of the warfarin withdrawal prior to dental procedures um, is, is quite important and can be predicted um, genetically, uh, as well as, um, uh, for example, uh, CYP2D6 for pain management. So that's one, one type of thing that we'd be, um, uh, would like to, to work with other, other groups that also have um, uh, dental clinics. And in addition, um, we thought in terms of um, the uh, uh, periodontal disease and, and microbiome type, um, we would be uh, pleased to work with others, uh, in particular uh, to identify and uh, to identify their um, uh, diabetes patients. Uh, what the requirements for this would be: uh, diabetes patients um, and controls that already have genome-wide association studies and dental access. Uh, and basically what we'd like to know is if um, periodontal disease and or the oral microbiome um, can actually stratify some of those genetic signals and whether or not, um, you know, we could, we could be more predictive uh, for type 2 diabetes susceptibility and outcomes. So how this might work, for example, would be uh, to have uh, non-diabetic patients, pre-diabetics and, and type 2 diabetics, um, and then compare them in terms of periodontal disease uh, state uh, for, for each, uh, each SNP, uh, for example, and similarly for the oral microbiome. So, um, and our, the potential outcomes from this would be um, to begin a dental pharmacogenetics um, study, that's what I talked about first, and then better understanding of a risk for um, type 2 diabetes, onset severity and control, um, as well as, as, as I said, uh, drilling down to, under, to better understand the genetics of type 2 diabetes and the role of the environment um, in type 2 diabetes. And this could be expanded to other disorders linked to periodontal disease, for example, coronary artery disease. So uh, because uh, uh, we were so lonely yesterday, um, I thought that uh, what we would, we would do is to, uh, to contact those, of, uh, those UVU institutions where there are uh, dental schools or dental services and uh, detail this and see if there's any uh, interest in, in following any of these up. So uh, thank you for your time. Questions or comments? Oh, Mark, as usual. Mark, as usual, right. So um, I'll go before Mark. Um, so did your group uh, <laughs> uh, dis discuss um, the role of the dentist in genomic medicine, and could you conceive of some uh, projects that might be sort of implementation projects to get dentists to um, uh, capture saliva, bi relevant biological samples that might be relevant, both the microbiome types of samples, which I'm not sure how, you know, challenging those are to ascertain in a meaningful and standardized way, but also um, samples that could be used for DNA analysis, um, at least from my perspective, uh, people, I see my dentist much more frequently than I see my primary care physician, and that's possibly another avenue to implement genomic medicine. Uh, yes. So, so basically, uh, this is part of a, a, of our project in oral systemic health, um, and uh, we will be working with our our 
our dentists, Marshfield Clinic dentists, um, at, who see the same patients that we see in the clinic. And um, we're training uh, dental hygienists to, to be able to, to take these uh, uh, microbiome samples. Um, each of these participants in this study um, will, we will get um, uh, DNA, for, uh, I'm sorry, blood for DNA, plasma, and serum. Uh, there'll be um, um, standard uh, clinical tests, including hemoglobin A1C, uh, fasting glucose, um, uh, and, et cetera, and, uh, lipids. And um, then we're also, um, they'll also be seen periodically every, every six months. So um, that, that's, that's kind of the way we're trying to do this. So one advantage that we have is that um, the Marshfield Clinic is sort of uh, a, a, um, a, a conglomerate. We, we have our medical clinics, we have our dental clinics, uh, we also uh, run our own uh, health care plan, security health plan, and we have our own, um, our own um, electronic health record and electronic dental records, and th those are combined. So uh, since the dentists also work for us, um, we, can, we can work with them uh, and, and try to combine um, this to have um, pharmacogenetics for, for dentistry. It might be, actually, it might be easier to work with the dentists in some way than the general practitioners, so. Um, just parenthetically, I thought it was interesting you used the term drill down in your dental, <laughs> but, but if we set that aside for a second. Um, I th you know, one of the things we've uh, talked about peripherally has been how do we engage and, and get the attention of decision makers to say, hey, this is really important. And I really like the uh, idea of the, um, uh, pharmacogenomics for warfarin withdrawal for dental procedures. I can tell you that anecdotally at our place, uh, we hear a lot about canceled surgical procedures based on the fact that the patient's INR is not uh, within an acceptable range for surgery. And again, we presume, as you have presumed, that some of that is due to the different uh, uh, pharmacogenomic variants. Um, that's something, uh, canceled surgeries are, uh, you know, that's a resource rate waste for that organization. And if we could do something to actually move the needle using the dental procedures as a pilot and then expanding it to all surgical procedures for patients on warfarin um, and show that we can actually decrease the number of canceled surgeries as a primary outcome, that would be something that would really get the attention of administrators and say, hey, maybe there's something to this. So I think that's a really good project. Um, uh, speaking as someone who's not yet a Geisinger who is, uh, has a dental clinic, uh, apparently, uh, who knew, um, I, I think we'd be, we'd be interested in, uh, uh, in exploring that. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Did you, well, I think there's, there's two things that came out. One is coming back to some of the comments made yesterday. The, the endpoints that really drive this in practice um, are goofy little things like that. And so I, I think that's really important. Now, we've done a little bit of work with people implanting devices for cardiac disease who have the exact same problem. Um, and that's, except they think they know how to manage warfarin. Um, at least the dentists freely admit they don't have a clue how to manage warfarin. Um, uh, but it's the same issue. You know, right. if you, you think, you know, there's a three-day protocol, they do the three days, they're not ready, you have to cancel, et cetera. Right. So I think there's something there. Um, the other piece is that there are a, 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 a decent-sized group of, of boutique dentistry groups out there who are doing pharmacogenetics already. Uh, and we've consulted for them a little bit. Others have probably in this room as well. And they've decided that for the pain control, not so much for warfarin, more for pain control, that their patients are special and they want to know about this ahead of time. And their patients are willing to pay for it. And so they're doing it. And, and so there's a, uh, what's the company's name? Al Genomics, I think, is the company that, that has a whole suite of different tests that they're developing around dental pain and around uh, dental syndromes. So there are some early adopters already out there in this space, but I like your idea of going to the more, the, the, the generalist uh, dentist and, and trying to do something exciting. And, and also we're, we're planning, we, we, tr we also uh, are training some of these dentists. We have um, a whole residency program and eventually uh, we hope to have a dental school. So this could all be part of, part of their, uh, their training and practice. Okay, Thanks. thank you very much.
I think what we'll do is, since now is the time for break, we'll take a 15-minute break now and then resume with um, Jeff.